On March 27, 2020, President Trump signed the largest emergency spending measure in United States history, worth $2.2 trillion. The bill includes a stimulus payment to individuals of up to $1,200. Married couples will get up to $2,400, and $500 will be added for every child in the household under the age of 17. The amount you receive will be based on your 2018 tax return. Well, unless you're this guy. Oh, January 1st. Better get going on those taxes, Nettie. So yeah, if you filed already, it will be based on your 2019 return. With that said, if you earned less than $75,000, you will receive the full $1,200 stimulus payment. But for every additional $100 you earned above $75,000, $5 will be subtracted from your stimulus payment, and so on and so forth. If you earned $99,000 or more, you will not receive anything, because you don't need it, you're rich already. The check will go out to taxpayers who are legally eligible to work, and that includes US citizens, permanent alien residents, i.e. green card holders, and most people on work visas such as H-1B and H-2A. So basically, if you have a social security number and made under $99,000, you will be eligible for a stimulus check. But for some people, like Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, this isn't good enough. To clarify, $1,200 checks are only going to some with social security numbers, not immigrants with tax IDs. Thanks to GOP, these checks will be cut off the backs of tax-paying immigrants who get nothing. Many are essential workers who pay more taxes than Amazon. Wall Street gets four trillion. Whew, there is so much to unravel in just one tweet. $1,200 checks are only going to some with social security numbers, not immigrants with tax IDs. So when AOC says immigrants, she actually means illegal immigrants because legal immigrants are given social security numbers and don't use tax ID numbers. Now, I know what you're thinking. Andrew, don't you need a social security number to legally work in the United States? Well, when you're hired in a new job, you are required to fill out Form I-9. Someone who is not authorized to work in the United States can present a fake or stolen social security card. If they don't have one, they can show one of six other documents that establish employment authorization. And of course, these documents are either fake or stolen too. Then you can just fill out a fake or stolen social security number right here on the I-9 form. No verification necessary. The Eternal Revenue Service makes it easy for illegal immigrants to pay taxes. All they need to do is apply for an Individual Taxpayer Identification Number, or ITIN. ITIN numbers are issued by the IRS to individuals who do not have and are not eligible to obtain a valid social security number, but who are required by law to file an individual income tax return. Illegal immigrants that file federal tax returns are basically doing it to demonstrate good moral character. That way, if they have the opportunity to legalize their immigration status, or if they get caught, having paid federal taxes for years can help their case. Now, according to the IRS, in 2015, 4.3 million people used ITINs to pay over $13.7 billion in net taxes. And most of these taxpayers were undocumented immigrants. And based on that number, if each taxpaying illegal immigrant were to receive a $1,200 stimulus check, it would amount to $5.2 billion, which would be about 38% of what they paid in federal taxes. And that's not including the stimulus payments of $500 per child. Think about it. Even if only 10% of those taxpayers claimed one child each, that would be an additional $217.5 million in stimulus funds. And yes, clearly I'm lowballing that figure. Thanks to GOP, these checks will be cut off the backs of taxpaying immigrants. First, I'm sure that there are a lot of Democrats who would disagree with sending undocumented workers a stimulus check, so it's unfair just to single out Republicans. In fact, Let's look at the version of the bill that Democrats released earlier in the week. Under the Economic Assistance Payments section, the term eligible individual is defined as any individual other than a non-alien resident individual. 
And remember, this language was in the bill that House Democrats presented, as well as the final bill that every single Senate Democrat voted for. But AOC insists that it was the evil Republicans that put it there. And as for her statement that these checks will be cut off the backs of taxpaying immigrants, it's estimated that over $500 billion will be passed out to individuals, including $300 billion in stimulus payments. But since undocumented immigrants only paid $13.7 billion in federal taxes for 2015, and I can't imagine that it's much higher for 2019, their contribution to the stimulus package is a very, very small percentage. Not to mention that their presence in the United States contributes to driving down wages, which hurts the American economy. So they've taken plenty already. Many are essential workers who pay more taxes than Amazon. Yeah, but unlike those essential workers, Amazon is in the country legally. But also for 2019, Amazon had over $1 billion in federal income tax expense. So the whole Amazon doesn't pay taxes argument is officially dead. Wall Street gets 4 trillion. Wall Street gets 4 trillion? The entire package is only 2.2 trillion. Math is hard. So the biggest part of the $2.2 trillion package is $500 billion being set aside for loans, loan guarantees, and other investments to businesses, states, and municipalities. AOC has called this a Wall Street giveaway, Wall Street slush fund, and corporate welfare. However, unlike bailouts in the past, these companies are in trouble because of the health crisis and not through any fault of their own. And it's not corporate welfare. These are loans that businesses will be paying back. Loans that will help many of these businesses stay alive and help them to keep their employees on the payroll. Because if the businesses die, the working people that AOC claims to care so much about will be out of work. On March 27th, the day the House of Representatives planned to vote on the stimulus package, AOC spoke on the House floor criticizing the bill. But we have to go into this vote eyes wide open. What did the Senate majority fight for? One of the largest corporate bailouts with as few strings as possible in American history. Shameful. The greed of that fight is wrong for crumbs for our families. And the option that we have is to either let them suffer with nothing or to allow this greed and billions of dollars, which will be leveraged into trillions of dollars to contribute to the largest income inequality gap in our future. There should be shame about what was fought for in this bill and the choices that we have to make. General, ladies, time's expired. And I yield. Wow, nothing says strong leader like a childish arm flailing temper tantrum. <laughs> now, when AOC says that these bailouts come with few strings attached, that's not true. The legislation includes restrictions on salary increases for executives of companies receiving these loans. These companies are also prohibited from issuing stock buybacks while loans are outstanding. And when it comes to distributing these loans, there will absolutely be a Congressional Oversight Commission despite President Trump's objections. Now, do I like everything in regards to the 500 billion? No, including the 17 billion set aside for Boeing. What the f Republicans? But overall, I'm hopeful that congressional oversight will make things more transparent. Plus, you know that if there's a shady deal going on that Democrats don't like, they'll leak details to the media to try and whip up public outrage. But with $500 billion going to large businesses, at least there's a better reason for it than say, giving $75 million in additional funding to the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, or an additional $75 million to the National Foundation of the Arts, and $75 million to the National Endowment for the Humanities. Then there's the $13 million going to Howard University, which already has an endowment of nearly $700 million, or giving an extra $25 million to the Kennedy Center. The Kennedy Center has suffered greatly because Nobody can go there. It's essentially closed. Uh, yeah, everything's closed, Mr. President. By the way, only hours after President Trump signed the bill, the Kennedy Center laid off all of their musicians. You can't make this stuff up. You'd think that this kind of big layoff would be in AOC's wheelhouse, but she hasn't said anything about it. Maybe she doesn't care about bougie musicians. Let them suffer. Anyway, after watching AOC's tantrum on the floor of the house, you might be wondering how she voted on the bill. Yay, nay, or present. 
If AOC voted in favor of the stimulus package, progressives could accuse her of not standing up for her principles, especially since she's been highly critical of the bill. Voting against the bill could hurt her politically with voters who would benefit from the stimulus and need it as soon as possible, and if she voted present, she could be labeled as a coward. Unfortunately, due to the health crisis, not every member could get to the House floor to vote, so House leadership chose a voice vote over a recorded vote. Pursuant to House Resolution 911, the previous question is ordered on the motion. The question is on adoption of the motion. Those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed say no. no. The motion is adopted. And with that, since there is no record how she voted, the congresswoman gets to have it any way she wants. If pressed, she can claim that she was among the yeas, but that would be contradictory to her performance on the floor. She can also claim that she stayed quiet in protest. That way, if the bill ends up being a massive failure, she can say she didn't vote for it. And there's some evidence of that. Because while most of the House members were applauding the passage of the bill, a bill that is going to help hundreds of millions of Americans in this desperate time of need, she was just sitting in her chair looking at her phone. Shameful. Thanks for watching, sharing, and hitting that like button. Follow me on Twitter for updates, and while you're at it, subscribe to the channel. Check out the links in the description, and check out these videos that you may have missed. As always, thanks for tuning in, stay safe, and hope to see you next time.